Well, hello and welcome to the Mindset Mentor. I'm Tanya Kolar, helping you cultivate a life you love. Well, today we're going to talk about self-image, self-awareness. And it's so interesting because I think we go through life sometimes, you know, in reverse gear. Uh, and of course, reverse gear has many implications and consequences. But what if you were to look in a mirror and actually see yourself uh, the way that you truly are not in the reverse. So really fascinating because on today's show, I have the creator of the first optically accurate non reversing mirror. And I got to tell you, it is unbelievable when you look in a mirror that truly reflects who you are. So let's just jump into the conversation and get started and say hello to John Walter. John, it is such a pleasure having you here on the mindset mentor today. Thanks, Tanya. Thanks for having me. Really, really happy to be here. Well, it's super cool. Uh, I know the concept of a non-reversing mirror is is not brand new, uh, but you were able to perfect it. But before we get into you know the details and how how you perfected it, you know, I would just love to explain to everybody what exactly is a true mirror for those who have actually never heard of it. Great, great question. Um, so what it is, it's it, very simple. Uh, it's two mirrors at right angles. Okay, that's the that's what it consists of. But to actually make it accurate and, and usable uh, is pretty tricky. Uh, the main thing that makes a true mirror a true mirror is the fact that when you look into it, there's no line between the two mirrors. And that's important because the line goes right through your eyes both of them, as it turns out. Um, and so you can't really use it because eye contact is not really possible. So I have one here just to show the audience. See, and you're actually seeing yourself in this. <laughs> so it's actually funny because I'm, I'm actually zooming or mirroring our, 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 our picture on the laptop. Yeah. Uh, but um, normally it would look like this. Oh, I see. So that's what you're seeing without that line, um, you know, coming down the center. And for those who cannot um, cannot see the mirror right now, uh, those who will be listening, um, you can absolutely uh, have a look on my YouTube channel, watch the video there, um, and also check out John's website. Uh, if you could tell everyone your website, John. So it's truemirror.com. And if you forget that, just Google true mirror or Google non-reversing mirror and I pop right up. <laughs> and there he is. Yes, you will see that image, that incredible image. You know, it's really fascinating that you were now able to come up with this concept to, to perfect, um, you know, what it is that we see. Because, of course, you know, we're, we're very visual as, as humans. Um, but oftentimes um, our perception is skewed um, and it can be be what we are seeing that actually ties into that skewed perception. So kind of fascinating. So I'd love to talk a little bit about, um, you know, when we do look into a regular mirror, um, how accurate or inaccurate is the reflection that we're seeing? So, so the, the inaccuracy is twofold. Um, it's physical and it's personal. And the physical is the kind of um, known quantity of this kind of a mirror for, for since it was first patented in 1887. Oh, it's actually seeing yourself without being reversed. So for instance, if you looked into a reversing mirror, you're going to see uh, yourself wearing a what would appear to be a right hair part. Mm -hmm. But in fact, you're actually wearing a left hair part in real life. So when you look in the true mirror, you can actually see yourself with the left hair part. And, you know, that's a whole nother story, but um, uh, that actually matters for the way you're actually presenting yourself. Hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, Google hair part theory, if you want to have more information on that. Um, but the, the, uh, the, the personal part comes into play and it's just so much more important because the way we actually perceive each other is, is both you know, what you physically look like, but but who you actually are, who's actually coming out from your physical features for your face and your eyes, especially. And when we talk to each other, we read our faces really, really accurately. Within milliseconds, we can understand what someone's saying and thinking based on what their face is saying. And this is just the base of human, human communication. So what I discovered is that, um, when you see yourself in a non-reversing mirror, again, it's two mirrors at right angles, um, 
you can actually communicate with yourself. Like your eyes and your face actually work properly. And as a car layer, they don't backwards. Like when you look at your face in a reversing mirror, within seconds, your face will stop communicating and you tend to just stare. And that's that's crazy. It's, it's, it's crazy that this is the version of you that all of us have had of ourselves since childhood that's that's everywhere. It's completely unconscious and unchallenged. People just believe it's them. And it's also solitary. You're mm -hmm. the only person that knows you with your features and your face and the communication behind it in reverse. It's it, it's just this sort of thing that that once you dig into it and, and you realize that it actually matters, that, you know, wow, I can't really talk to myself properly in a mirror, well, what am I saying to myself? What is that doing to my self image? What is it doing to who I think I am and how I'm feeling and what I th thought about such and such. And it's just this strange, almost twilight zone experience mm -hmm. episode we can make out of this that everyone has this different image in their head that's actually not real well is it's really fascinating so I, you know and as you were talking i was thinking is it sort of like um you know a disassociation with the self when you're looking at yourself in a regular mirror so what is it and and why is it that we um don't really connect with ourselves fully do we believe that the person that we see is somebody else, um, that we are an imposter. I don't like, like, what do you think is, is really the cause of that distortion? Um, the, first of all, the mechanism for why, why your face doesn't communicate properly is based on information. The idea that when we actually are talking with each other, you're going to say something. And especially like with the way you smile the way you actually you know, your eyes register, you know, like, oh, I understand you. Oh, there it is. You know, mm -hmm. this is what we do all day long with each other. But if you look at the different sides of the face, the left side, the right side, they're different. They have a different feeling to them. And the idea is when you flip them, you, you scramble up the message that the person that you're actually saying. Oh. And the thing is, you're in a feedback loop mm -hmm. with yourself. Like instantaneously, you're going to be seeing yourself feeling and looking different than what's actually you are feeling and, and, and thinking, which then causes you to interpret. And then your interpretation and response then shows up on your face and in your eyes, then goes back out to the mirror, comes back, it gets reversed, comes back, you reinterpret it. And this is the, this feedback loop that's going at probably maybe 50 frames a second. I think that's what our brain can perceive. And, and so the net effect is that this, this lack of, of connection between the actual version of you, which you're actually feeling and thinking and expressing gets shifted very dramatically to pretty much nothing. Like you tend to just settle down and stare at yourself. Like the vitality just drains out of your face and you're still there, but now you're kind of communicating with this blank expression. And that, when you talk about disassociation, I mean, it's almost by definition disassociating you. It's it's or it's dysmorphic. It's by definition dysmorphic. Mm -hmm. And so, where does that go? Why? What does that do? All these kind of questions, especially when you figure it's going on your entire life and every single time you look in the mirror. Wow, you know, truly fascinating. I mean, and there's science to back this up, and 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 your background, uh, you know, in math and and phys physics, I believe, right, in computers, have really culminated to to create that perfect, uh, you know, mirror, the true mirror. And you know, it's fascinating because you were talking about that that feedback loop, right? When we're constantly seeing that in the reverse, it's kind of like the cognitive, uh, you know, function, right? It's it's sending us a signal. Uh, it's almost like cutting the signal and then sending another signal right so it's that feedback loop that we're constantly experiencing yes. and and that's really indicative i think of you know how we can operate in life with uh uh, false beliefs, limiting beliefs, and the the, the perceptions that we, um, you know, have, and it's exactly sort of the same thing. But this is uh, a physical manifestation of that that's tied to that feedback loop, and that's tied to the uh, misperceptions, <laughs> right? Or even the perceptions that we create out of what it is that we're constantly seeing. So really fascinating stuff, and it's so interesting because you would never think that there would be such a big difference. Um, 
looking in a mirror because it's familiar, right? This is what we're used to. And whoever thought that there was anything different and weird about looking at yourself in the mirror. Um, And in fact, I find that, you know, so many people have thought, well, you shouldn't be looking at yourself in the mirror for too long because then you're a narcissist or you're full of yourself or or whatever. But there is, um, you know, an incredible sense of empowerment when you actually can look at yourself in the mirror. And mind you, whether that is a true mirror or a regular, like uh, a reverse mirror, there is a power with being able to connect with yourself. But what I'm hearing, John, is that there is a completely different level of connecting with the true self by mm-hmm. by gazing into a true mirror yeah yeah absolutely and you're talking about self-image and and beliefs um my understanding of this is that the the, the lack of vitality that you see in your face uh in a mirror is is feeds back into your sense of self and you know like i i, I am not the the real full version of me i'm this sort of reduced version that has these that that ends up sourcing some limiting self-beliefs especially when you talk about socially and about how you fit, f- see see yourself fitting in the world um like you're it's it's basically inauthenticity to being fed back to you on a regular basis how that actually translates is the big uh mystery because everyone is so different so the the like when you say it's it's empowering to actually gaze into your eyes and actually you know connect with yourself because a lot of people don't mm. and again you go back to say well why don't you well i think because the mirror long ago fed you information it's like ah eh, it's not worth it mm. it's not worth it to connect with myself because i feel uncomfortable at some level because because it's inauthentic but you probably were 10 years old when you thought that you know, it's not, it's, it's such a manufactured aversion to looking at yourself in a mirror. It's not natural because like, kids have all day long, they'll spend time in the mirror, but at some point we start to pull back and go, yeah, I don't like that. Mm-hmm. And so the amazing, most amazing quality of the true mirror is that when you look into it, you go, wow, I actually really like this person that's looking back. Look at that vibrancy. Look at how how powerful they are. Look at how present. Look at how yeah. how much um, joy is in that in the eyes. Because if you're feeling those feelings, you will see them. If you're feeling powerful, you'll see your power. Mm. One, one time, I scared myself. <laughs> it's like whoa, <laughs> you know. It's like wow, that is like insane. Because we we're human beings. My God, we're the most amazing creature we know of. And yet we have these incredibly limiting self-beliefs that I think are caused partially and over time by the mirror. Hmm. So my mission with the true mirror is to kind of fix the interface. So you still have to do your work. You still have to kind of gaze into your eyes and become, uh, you know, connected with yourself and, and work on your issues and stuff. But now your reflection is more of an ally than a source of doubt and confusion. You know, you can get compassion and empathy and, and, and validation from yourself instead of the other. Wow. It's so wild. It's so wild. Um, you know, and I had the pleasure of, you know, as you know, John, you walked me through the process of, you know, gazing into the true mirror. And I found it absolutely fascinating because, I mean, I love mirror work um, and I've, I've done mirror work for years. Uh, but I remember, so I'm talking about a regular mirror, right? Um, and I remember the first time of, you know, doing mirror work and it's a simple, it was a simple process. And it's actually what I teach my clients now too, um, is to look in the mirror and you say, you know, you say your name and you tell yourself that you love you. So it'd be Tanya, I love you. And it sounds so easy, like super easy. Like I'm thinking who could not do that, right? So I remember doing that. I stood in front of a mirror, not a true mirror. I stood in front of a regular reversing mirror and I said, Tanya, Mm -hmm. I love you. And I freaked out. I freaked out, John. I had to literally jump out of the view of the mirror. I just, I, it was the weirdest thing. And I, I, right, it right. shocked me because I couldn't believe that was my my impulse was to get uh, out of the mirror because I, and, and so I kind of connect with what you say is that, you know, it's this identity thing. And you think, who is that person? Because I didn't like that person and I was judging myself and I had all of these things going through my mind and it was 
very strange, so to speak, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like that I jumped mm -hmm. away because I did not want to see myself. Right. And then my my theory is that you're, you know, you try to be that real and, and, and deep and authentic. And the mirror is not doing you any favors by kind of, you know, changing the message. And so how do you process it? It doesn't compute. You know, this is this is why it's like, you know, mirror work is is sure it's a good idea in principle, but mm -hmm. the, the interface is faulty. So, so when you saw it in the in the at the at the self image summit, <laughs> did you did we do that? Did you say I love you to yourself? So you, you know, it's interesting. I don't think I said those exact words, but um, well, and now by the way, I have a very different relationship with the mirror, and I can say I love myself and not jump sure. and freak out. However, what I found to be the most uh, extraordinary when I use the true the true mirror is that. Um, I was comfortable, very comfortable with myself uh, and maybe not initially it took maybe like, you know, a minute, let's say. Right. Because uh, in that first minute, mm -hmm. of course, I'm judging myself. Right. <laughs> I was yeah. like, oh, you know, this eye is smaller. And, you know, there's these things going through through my mind. But um, the, the real fascinating thing was, is that a few minutes into it and I, this did not happen right away, but several minutes into it. Oh, my gosh, I had such compassion. I had compassion for myself, mm. like this true, incredible compassion. And it felt amazing. And I thought, mm. wow, like that was a, a kind of a polar opposite experience from when I, you know, originally did mirror work and I had to yeah. jump out of the way, right, yeah. to truly right. seeing who I am, but connecting with the, yeah. that, that, you know, soul, so to speak, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's great. I mean, absolutely. This is what it's about. And and the thing is, you know, you 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 saw compassion. Mm -hmm. In other words, your face actually did message compassion to you. You were feeling it, your face was conveying it. And then again, you're in that same feedback loop where you go, oh, and you feel more compassion. Like it mm -hmm. actually deepens and strengthens the feeling, and your face then continues to reflect that. And this is the whole power of this, is that you have a continuous relationship with yourself and your emotions and your feelings. And some of these really, really powerful and positive ones, especially after you've done the work, like you mm -hmm. said, you've done, you know, you've gotten long past that. I'm afraid to say, I loved that to myself. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, you just, without even prompting, you felt that compassion and, and, and these deeper and higher. And, you know, I believe all the other positive qualities that you've kind of worked on to to develop about who you are and what you're about they're just there they're just present for you to actually connect with and validate yourself you know through them like your face suddenly becomes your friend oh you know? i love that that's so deep so, so good right so we're we're going to continue the conversation we're going to take a short break and we're going to talk more about how you can become your best friend look at yourself deeply uh with love and compassion through the true mirror my special guest today is john walter he is the creator of the first optically perfect accurate um reverse non-reverse mirror which is just kind of like it's a little bit mind blowing when you think about it right so we'll we'll talk a little bit more about that when we come back stay with us and, and uh, more coming up here on saga 960 Welcome back to the Mindset Mentor. I'm Tanya Kohler, helping you live your best life. And sometimes, you know, it can be difficult when we don't feel our best and we look in the mirror and we judge ourselves and we criticize ourselves. And of course, we can be our own worst critics. But what if you could look in a mirror and actually love the reflection that you see, the person that you are? Well, we are speaking with the creator of the first optically accurate non-reversing mirror that is helping people around the world love the person that they are to experience themselves actually more authentically and through a mirror and that's really quite fascinating John Walter you are a genius for creating the true mirror as you have perfected it I understand that you know the concept of a non-reversing mirror dates back to you know the 1800s right but what you're now able to do for people is truly life changing. So you've, I'd love to kind of talk uh, a little bit more about your experience with the true mirror and like, how did this 
come to, to be? How did you know that there was something not fully authentic when you looked in a mirror at yourself in a mirror? Sure. That's a uh, good story. Um, how much time we have? <laughs> <laughs> we can always do a follow-up um, show, John. I know there's so much to talk about here, right? <laughs> it, 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 is, it is fairly simple, but um, I had had uh, I'd been struggling with my mirror image for, for quite some time. Um, feeling that something was slightly off. Um, and um, uh, I, I happened to be, I was, it was, I was young, I was probably 22, hanging out on the beach in California at, at a friend's house at a party, having a great time. Mm -hmm. And I walked into the bathroom and the mirror just shot me down hard and just said, dude, you are, you know, I was out there, okay? But I looked terrible. And this big smile I had walking into the bathroom looked terribly fake and forced and posed. And it's like, I must be fooling those people out there because we're so, we so identify with this mirror image. I mean, God, it's been with us since we were babies. We really believe that's who we are. And my eyes were just shooting daggers at me, like instantly, I'm talking about in five seconds, I just threw, you know, five negative hardcore thoughts at me. You know, the biggest one is you're, you're there's something wrong with you. And it wasn't the first time. I mean, this has been going on, you know, like I said, I'd had struggles, but that something wrong with you was a big part of it. Um, and then I just threw my hands at the at the mirror and just, said, you know, turned the corner and there happened to be a double mirror medicine cabinet at, at right angles to the mirror that I was looking at. And this is the thing, you can do this at home, okay? You can take two mirrors, thin ones if you have possible, and hold them up at right angles. And this mm -hmm. is what I saw when I when I saw the medicine cabinet. Um, there's always a line in the middle and that line is very difficult to actually look past because it goes through both your eyes. But if you kinda kinda look around and, and, and try to find yourself behind in this reflection, at the time um, I literally did a double take because I saw something in my eyes that I recognized. And what I saw was the sparkle in my eye and what I recognized was my happiness because I was really having fun. I was, things were great out there in the party. I was walked in the smile suddenly, instead of being fake and forced and somewhat manic, suddenly it was warm and genuine and happy because mm -hmm. that was what was really going on. And for the first time, the mirror, my mirror reflection was, was reflecting it. And in an instant, like literally the second I, I saw that sparkle and recognized it, I, I, I said, said, there you are, you know? And it was like, so what? You're three sheets to the wind. You're having a good time. And I started beaming. I literally was like, my smile was huge. I was like, whoa, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just like, like this. And, and it didn't go away. And then I turned back to the regular mirror and I was like, it just disappeared again. So the, the moment was super significant and, and as far as I know, brand new because in this entire time of the mirror being patented in 1887 and there's a bunch of patents since then on various design elements, no one ever talked about that reflects myself properly. It's, it's a completely unknown and brand new concept in the world of psychology and self-image and self-awareness. It's just it's, and to this day, it still is kind of, um, it's still just me promoting this idea as, oh my God, it's it's really you looking back at you and from this mirror and the other one isn't, <laughs> you know, yeah. that's kind of the origin story. Oh, okay. I love that story. It's fascinating because you walked in to that, that bathroom looking in the mirror or catching, a, you know, a glimpse of yourself and that self-judgment was there immediately um and maybe even to go so far as say a little bit of self-loathing um yes. right um and then all of a and, sudden and, and and how how many times it does ha happen to you or or to people in general yeah and it's like oh my god how can you loathe yourself i it's know like, right i know what? yeah yeah crazy that so crazy like <laughs> no one in your life loathes you and no one and if you're not in front of the mirror do you really loathe yourself you know it's like nuts well, that this yeah. is a very common experience we're extraordinary beings and you know we are absolutely magnificent and you know i think that life sometimes prevents us from seeing that and it's that uh interruption right uh with 
with the 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 mirror in a regular mirror um that cognitive break it's kind of like that that loop as you were talking about earlier right so when you can look in a true mirror and spend time with yourself because that's that's interrupted it's not you're not getting those brain signals that are saying you know this is a wrong message we're reversing the image it's like no it's direct and it's deep and it's personal you know right. and it's re that's so interesting because I, I remember um you know doing the true mirror work and as i had mentioned earlier that I had compassion for myself and that sparkle that you're talking about, you know, in the eyes, you know, I could see that sparkle. And once you see the sparkle, you can't unsee the sparkle. Do you know what I mean? It's there because yeah. now you felt it. And so now you right. know what that feels like. And, you know, it was interesting because, um, and just to give uh, the listeners and the viewers a little bit of context, um, you know, John and I were at an event and your most recent event in Toronto where you had an incredible assortment of your true mirrors and you were guiding people you know through the process of you know experiencing um, you know what the true mirror uh, is like um, as I mentioned I had you know this incredible sense of compassion for myself and I sat at a table with a group of um, attendees at the event and we were all discussing our experience with the mirror and one of the ladies you know, I mean, everyone had these really great, you know, stories. And this one woman said, she looked at us and she said, how long did you spend in the mirror? Because she was kind of surprised that she didn't have that experience. Right. Mm -hmm. um, right. And, and then, you know, fortunately, uh, there was a second day of doing the same work and that same process. Mm -hmm. And, and I, what I had said to her, I said, you just didn't spend long enough. You know, you just didn't stay with it long enough. Sure. I said, because I, and I'm saying it was, I said that because of my own experience, because I didn't feel that compassion right away. I was still right. stuck in the, the the judgments a little bit like, oh, mm -hmm. this looks crooked. This is not right. Um, but if you stay with it, that I think is where the magic happens. What can you say to that? Uh, absolutely. Um, and first of all, back to your other thing, once you see the sparkle, you can't unsee it partially because it grows. <laughs> it's like, oh. whoa, it's actually even more. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you get this light of recognition. And, and the point is that that's light, that sparkle is actually light with meaning. And we are conveying information with that for why we're smiling. And that, that is a communication tool that we use all the time with each other. And what makes it genuine is the meaning behind the smile. And that meaning is carried by the eyes. So when you flip it, you lose the meaning, which makes the smile look kind of fake, which makes you stop. That's the mechanism. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But um, back to what you're saying about the um, spending time, it's it's also that there's an on switch. Okay, I like to to, to analogize to an electric bike. Here's an electric bike, and you and you say, God, it looks kind of big and bulky and kind of heavy, and and you get on, and it's like this this doesn't feel like a very good bike. I don't really get it, mm -hmm. um, and and I'm crooked in it, so it's even worse than you know. And then I say, no, there's a little switch there. And the switch is basically to look in your eyes and, and engage, try to communicate. And the best, the best expression again is your smile, which, which will create that light in your eyes, which will then, because it looks natural, you'll smile back. And that's where you suddenly go, oh, oh, I get it. And, and then once you have this sense of, oh, this bicycle now actually goes really fast. You know, suddenly these these emotions like compassion just show up and stick around and and deepen. And then the other ones and the other ones. And, and it's like here it is like 40 years after I first saw this experience. And mm. when I look at my eyes in the true mirror, I just see myself today. You know, where am I at right now? You know, what's going on now? And it looks similar to how it's how it's been, you know, for the last 40 years. But the. But the message is just the normal me that's going through my normal stuff. And it's just so, so much more rich and deep and powerful and, and enlightening. You know, I'll actually tell myself stuff about who I am and how I am uh, from, from my true mirror reflection. And then I go back to the regular mirror and it's just like, ah, it's the same old, same old. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So then do you think that having um, a, a true mirror is helpful for people who are, are really stuck and challenged with the self judgments, um, uh, you know, the, the critical eye, right? The always, you know, beating up on ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Look at it this way. 
the the way the person is with themselves probably has like zero correlation with the way the person's friends and family interact and and like and love them and in other words it's completely in their heads mm. you know what i'm saying i mean yeah. if you're true true story if you're a horrible person you're going to see horrible things in the true mirror but most people are not that way most people are generally good people and have good qualities and they they they're imperfect but it's still they're still beautiful they you know i mean there's all these kind of layers that we actually when we talk with each other we absolutely uh, compensate for any of the perceived physical flaws and we go to the personal and and the whole thing is this big wrapped up thing that especially people that know you that like you that love you will see all sorts of qualities that you never get to see in the in the reversing mirror instead you see someone that's critical that you pick apart your flaws you have you know some some slight you know you have a pimple and you think that's all people are going to see um, but deeply, you know, the, the, the structures in your mind that when you make eye contact go so far deep into like this sense of self, which has kind of had this warped thing going on again, since childhood, especially like during formative years, like, you know, during adolescence and all that stuff where you, you're, the, the mirror is just telling you one thing and everyone else is got normal faces normal sparkle normal smiles but you don't so must be something wrong with you and just the translation to to what your your actual relationship to yourself is being continually messed with by this reflect reverse mirror and so yes the true mirror is designed to absolutely address that and once you have that so if you if you get one and you have it in front of you say okay let me go and relearn who i am and who I am being, okay? Mm. Because it's not just the way I'm staring at the world, it's the way I'm actually interacting with the world. You know, how how do I show up? Who am I when I'm smiling? Who am I when I'm passionate? Who am I when when I'm I'm, I'm, I'm concentrated and focused and 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 let the, the your true reflection educate you on these really incredible positive qualities. And then you can believe in yourself and then you don't see your flaws. You see basically your beingness, which is just the essence of, of the, the thing that people find appealing and attractive about you. And you can kind of start letting go of this negativity that is probably just, just coming from you and your mirror image. I mean, again, it's crazy that this is just the norm for most people, for everyone. Wow. You know, it's really, I mean, it's so profound, um, you know, because um, the way that we feel about ourselves really dictates takes the quality of our lives and how we show up right in all of those different scenarios and you know um and sometimes creates that facade um and that that it really creates a lot of blocks in our lives when we're not living authentically um mm -hmm. and if we can now really connect with ourselves on that deep core level um it's mm -hmm. it's like a spiral um you know things start to spiral in a good way um mm -hmm. you know and and can take us to the next level of living to our full potential and right. starting to remove some of the barriers and the blocks that we have because even if we um you know look at the the non-physical um our blocks and our perceptions um again like uh, <laughs> I mean, I know I personally had a ton of limiting beliefs, right? And I've learned to reprogram mm -hmm. my mindset, optimize my mindset. And that's now why I teach other people to do that. Um, but it's the same thing. Uh, it parallels the physical, you know, blocks, right? When we look mm -hmm. in that mirror, but they're all um, correlated and they mm -hmm. all impact our lives you know, in such a huge way and how we show up for others, how we show up for ourselves, mm -hmm. the beliefs that we have, mm -hmm. what we believe is possible for us or what we falsely believe is not possible for us. Right, right. No, I hear that. Um, that's amazing. Because, uh, because again, it comes back to you need to do the work on yourself to get past limiting self beliefs and and once you do, you go, wow, look at the power of this. Look at this, this, this is, I'm so much more than what I used to think I was and what I was capable of. Um, and, and so my, my idea of the true mirror is it's, it's another tool in your toolkit of, of, of self, self, uh, affirming 
and developing actions that you still need to take, but it's a tool that suddenly can amplify and validate and, and let you just go, oh, I can totally let go of that limiting self-belief because it's not here. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if, like, you know, like you're, if you see compassion for yourself, just think about, of course, I'm compassionate with other people, you know, because that's how you are. You know, you see, you see these qualities that you act, end up sharing with yourself that make it so much easier to be those qualities out to the world. Mm-hmm. So that's the idea. Oh, I love that. So good. All right. We're going to continue the conversation here on Saga 960. You're listening to The Mindset Mentor. My special guest today is John Walter. He is the creator of the first optically perfect non-reversing mirror. And my goodness, I mean, there's so much uh, science uh, there, but it's really fascinating to see the difference of looking at yourself in a regular mirror, which is a reversing mirror, to John true mirror it's a way to get a true reflection of the self and how other people see you as well so stay with us and we're going to continue the conversation well hello and welcome back to the mindset mentor we are helping with your self-image today and maybe helping to shift how you see yourself and did you know that when you look in a mirror a regular mirror most mirrors are reverse mirrors so you're looking at yourself flipped Right. And that's kind of interesting because I think sometimes we live life upside down (laughs) in the chaos. And so what would it feel like when you actually would see yourself um, upright, facing correctly and just how others see you? Well, that's what Mm -hmm. we're talking about here today with my special guest, John Walter. He is the um, founder of the first optically accurate non-reversing mirror so that when we look at our image, we actually see ourself, our true authentic self, the way that others see us, not in the reverse. So John, such a fascinating concept. And I know that, you know, you're, you've been on a mission, um, you know, around the world. Um, you're right now, you're joining me from New York. We um, had the pleasure of meeting in Toronto on your last visit here, where I was able to experience uh, the true mirror for the very first time. And I got to tell you, I loved it. It's brilliant. Um, I I, and I, before I had um, experienced the true mirror, John, I saw it on, uh, I believe it was like s- social media somewhere. And I thought, oh, that's really fascinating. I have to make sure that I, you know, check out your your website, uh, which is what, it's truemirror.com. Is that the site? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and, uh, and then, you know, things happened and I experienced the true mirror when you were here in Toronto and it's a game changer. So I'd love to talk a little bit more about, you know, some of the benefits, even like personally for you that you have experienced, um, by seeing yourself authentically in the true mirror as you now have intended, but also if you can give us some examples of, um, things that you've seen from, from the, the, um, let's say breakthroughs that people have experienced yeah oh that's great um so so you know i think the 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 biggest thing i got within that first five minutes of of seeing it um 40 41 years ago um i i I was okay like there's nothing wrong with me and that was just so huge yeah um you know i i still have my issues in terms of how you know, my fears and my behaviors and my, and my, you know, not reaching my full potential. Those are all things I can work with, but at the core of my being is that I realized and still realize I'm fine. (laughs) There's nothing wrong with me, (laughs) you know? Um, And, and that was huge. So, so Mm -hmm. that was a huge benefit in, in the practical sense. um, uh, You know, you can certainly use the true mirror to see which way you want to part your hair Again, you're you're wearing a left part, but in the mirror it looks like a right, and you're choosing usually based on what you like, and yet you're not presenting what you like to the world. So maybe you want to put your hair on the right side. Mm-hmm. And if you want to Google hair part theory, there's a whole story about that, and let's just not go there right now. That'll be another um, show, John. We'll yeah, do another, be another show. On another that. show. <laughs> yes. And and mm-hmm. and as part of the story is that what what it actually pre predated my discovery of the true true mirror. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to mention, um, first off, that the the idea of understanding how I am as an expressive human being is a big part of this. 
Um, when you look at yourself in the mirror, very often your expressions just fade or you have a very limited range. Um, your positive expressions, the one with that light, kind of the light goes out and you stop doing them. But your negative expressions stick, stick around. Like frowns look just as frowny backwards as mm -hmm. forwards. In fact, at some level they deepen, okay? Because then you get tinged with like criticism and judgment about, you know, like look at how miserable you are, you know? <laughs> and and then, and and so you you have none of your positive expressions and all of your negative ones um, or, or neutral, you know, like you just staring at yourself and, and then picking apart your face for all just, the, you're just seeing yourself as a physical. So at a benefit level, you get, get to see how you actually animate yourself, which then helps you when you're facing the world, what am I looking like to the world? Okay. Um, because that is a huge superpower we all have. It's like way more than just what my face is doing is looking like is what am I doing with it? How am I being forceful? How am I being engaging? How am I showing up? Why Why would someone like me? Um, why would someone listen to me? Hmm. Um, so a couple of things I wanted to say on Zoom, you can unmirror your image, okay? So when I'm looking at you, I'm seeing you with the left part. But right now on your little video, are you seeing yourself mirrored? Yes. Like you're seeing a right part? So the thing is you can go to your video settings and unmirror that. And the reason you would do that, first of all, you can kind of get a sense of um, what you look like. You can't make eye contact. And that's the biggest difference in the true mirror is you can, can connect and be present with yourself, being present with yourself, being present. You know, you can get that really vital connection. But in the Zoom thing, if you're, if you're, if you're glancing over at your picture as you're communicating, you will see your natural expressions because we're, we're doing that with each other. But because it's not backwards, you know, there it's more continuous. So you can actually get more used to how you're actually communicating just with this little Zoom Zoom trick you can do. And so in theory, when you're actually talking with people, your your glancing over to your own face won't be as discontinuous. Do you know what I mean? It won't have that that shift to my my reversed self-image that's kind of doing its little number back here. You just be, okay, this is just me being me being me, you know? So that's number one. And again, it, it comes back to, you can see what you look like unreversed by using a camera. Someone takes a video of you and you see what it is, mm -hmm. but you don't have the interactivity. Like the lens does not interact. So most times you're posed or you're, you know, someone takes a picture, hey, that's my smile, you know? And you know, it's not really that that full animated, real genuine smile. But also, um, even if, if a video, you go and people complain on social media, the inverted filter, which shows you actually not inverted, people hate it because all <laughs> they see is the weird, this looks different, it feels crooked, but they can't look in their eyes and, and connect, which is where the, the value comes from. Well, because it's not in real time, right? So, uh, yeah. well, you're not viewing it in real time when you're you, you're viewing yourself in a video, right? So yes. versus yeah. experiencing yourself in a true mirror, you know, yes. you're you're in that mm -hmm. moment, right? Um, in mm -hmm. that present moment. I think that's, you know, a lot of magic happens in the present in life when we can get present yes. to ourselves, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. There, there's no, no time like the present. Yeah, for sure. You know, this is really fascinating. And, um, you know, I just wanted to go back briefly to, um, you know, I had mentioned there was a woman, um, you know, in my group who, who, when I first tried the true mirror and I was explaining how we all had a conversation and she was saying, well, you know, how long did you guys spend in front of that mirror? Well, she did go back the next day. Um, and it was also interesting because, um, you know, I made her go, you know, go back and, and, um, then she was looking at the mirror and she would turn to me and she would, she would shake her head. She's like, Nope, nothing like, Nope, nothing, yeah. you know? And I said, go back, you know, and she went back and, and she spent a little bit longer and then she turned around and she nodded and she was like, oh, I got it. And you could <laughs> see like her oh. entire body changed, her physiology changed because mm -hmm. she did get it, right? She saw yeah. herself yeah. Um, yeah. and connected with herself. And, and I don't, I don't, I'm not talking about like, you know, 30 minutes or anything, just a few minutes, right? And, yeah. but it was really fascinating to see that. And I was actually, I, I had a little proud moment. I was like, oh my God, wow. And she was uh, so grateful um, and was thanking me. So I can't even imagine for you, John, 
um, how how fulfilling it is um, to be yes. able to bring people to those experiences and, and beyond. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, I've probably done it about 30,000 times, I think, over wow. 30 years. But it's even more fulfilling and, and gratifying to hear you doing it and the other coaches that were there. I mean, to me, I'm only one person. And, you know, but to have other people, you know, really guide people through their experience, because a lot of everyone needs it. And some people mm -hmm. more than more than sometimes also, if you stand next to them and make eye contact, mm -hmm. that's when they actually start to animate. But I want to tell you the story. Um, it was at Burning Man. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you're familiar with Burning Man yeah. or maybe mm -hmm. audience it's a big mm -hmm. festival in the mm -hmm. desert and and a woman came in she's probably in her mid-20s um she was maybe you know 20 pounds over her ideal weight for her whatever you know mm -hmm. um and she's you know almost six foot tall she was a you know very big uh large woman but she after she got the whole, you know, saw where the switch was, she started jumping up and down. Okay. And going, this makes me so happy. <laughs> it was Aww. like, it was like, it was like, why, what's the going on? And she goes, I just don't get it. Like back at camp and generally all the time in my life, guys hit on me all the time. They're always like trying to like, you know, be my friend, this and that. And, and said, why? Like she had no clue because when we looked at herself backwards, she looked like a frumpy, middle-aged, you know, blah human being, you know, like like a housewife or something. I mean, again, not to disparage housewives, but um, just the the. But in real life, she was like this firecracker. She had such a sparkling energy. Like within five seconds, you loved her. Of course, you know, look how beautiful you are. You're amazing. And so she she got to see that and to be able to actually connect and and be 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 in love with herself, mm. you know, and, and this is the idea is like suddenly the way she related or the way the world was relating to her made sense. You know what I mean? And, and we talk about body dysmorphia. I mean, there's so many, especially women have so much like negative self-image about their bodies. And, and to me, it's partially because you're not animating it. You know, if, like you said, even her physiology changed when she actually started to show up. And like, instead of just this kind of face and body, it was suddenly a being. And, and so when you get to see your being coming through your body and how it animates it, it's just, it's an entirely different picture. And, and I think that my, my goal is that this will absolutely help with body dysmorphic disorder. Mm -hmm. Um, even though that if you take away the disorder part of it, where it's become an obsessive thing, it's body dysmorphia for everyone. Like it's dysmorphic by definition. <laughs> you've, you've changed, you've morphed over it into something other than what's real. So that's part of my, mm -hmm. my vision for this is that it kind of fixes a lot of that like weird, weird stuff that's embedded deep in our psyche where we just see this blah version of us versus the actual true animated version. Oh, which is so much better. I love that where we can actually see our authentic, magnificent being our whole selves without yeah. the judgment, you know, without mm -hmm. the belief that there's something wrong with us. So if you're listening yeah. right now, let's be very clear. There is nothing wrong with you. Um, right. You know, we go through life with the, that belief and it really, you know, my goodness, it creates so many barriers. So I love uh, your mission, John. And unfortunately, we are out of time. So I want to say thank you so much for joining us here on the Mindset Mentor. And again, just very quickly, if you can let everyone know how they can get in touch with you. Thanks, Tanya. Thanks so much for having me. So uh, truemirror.com and do do uh, go, go to my social media, which is at, at truemirrorco or just truemirror. You'll pop up and you see hundreds of videos of people going, <laughs> I love this. Oh, that's so awesome. Well, thank you for shedding some light on our true authentic selves, John. Uh, and again, please uh, follow John Walter and learn more about the true mirror. Stay with us and stay tuned for the next Mindset Mentor every Thursdays at 3 p.m. I'm Tanya Kola, helping you live your best life. Thank you. <laughs>